Hello, thank you for coming to my video. If you would like to help my channel grow, please like and subscribe, and please click on this little bell icon so you never miss a future video. Welcome back guys, today we're playing some Mortal Kombat 4 on Sony PlayStation and Nintendo 64. Uh, I've been looking forward to this, uh, confession right out of the gate, I love Mortal Kombat 4. Uh, in terms of all the arcade Mortal Kombats, it might actually be my favorite. I would say it's tied with the prototype version of the first Mortal Kombat. So yeah, we're going to get into this one and talk about the differences between the two versions. So right off the bat, I'm playing the Nintendo 64 version, PlayStation version is pre-recorded on the left. And I'm going to configure my controller a little bit. So just like I played the Mortal Kombat Trilogy, I assign everything to the last four buttons like the Saturn version of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. And the B and A, I'm going to leave unassigned. So we'll change this to high punch. Change this to low punch. High kick and low kick can stay the same. Change to R to block. Change L to run. And these actually change to sidestep if I want to. So a lot of interesting things about Mortal Kombat 4. Um, it was the last Mortal Kombat game to be featured in the arcades. It is also the last Mortal Kombat game to have the traditional high punch, low punch, high kick, low kick uh, control style. It is the first Mortal Kombat game to not use uh, digitized actors for characters and go with uh, 3D graphics. So right off the bat, um, you can see just the differences, like with this compared to my previous Mortal Kombat games, like just the different uh, style of graphics without the actors or anything like that. Um, Nintendo 64 version has much better graphics, better, I don't know if it's a higher polygon count, but it definitely has higher textures. I think it's both higher polygon count and higher textures. So it is also the first Mortal Kombat to incorporate the use of weapons. So each character can do kind of like a little uh, special move. Uh, uh, oops, trying to do the fatality. There we go. Uh, you can do like a control style, like, you know, back forward, high punch, or whatever, depending on the character, to pull out your weapon. You can also chain it to a combo. Uh, combo system in this game, it's similar to Mortal Kombat 3, but it's also a little bit different. It's still got that dial combo system, but every character actually has the same uh, combos, which is basically high punch, high punch, high kick, and high kick. And there's different variations of that as well, which I'm going to show them off here. You can do high punch, high punch, high kick, high kick. You can do high punch, high punch, high kick, high kick, and then chain a special move at the end of that, depending on your character. Scorpion doesn't really have a special move to chain at the end of that, but like if you're playing Raiden, you can chain that Superman flying at the end of it, or if you're Sonya, you can cha chain that leg grab at the end of it, or you can also chain the weapon at the end of it as well. Like you, so you saw that I just chained the special weapon at the end of it for like a five hit combo right there. Um, there's also variations, you can do high punch, high punch, high kick, and then down high punch to add an uppercut to it. Like that. Uh, there's also just high punch, high kick, high punch. Which is also a little bit more powerful than doing the four hit version, because the four hit version is actually diminishing returns. So if you want to do that pop up to add special moves to it, you actually want to do the three hit version, because you'll get a lot more damage to it. So this is I can pull it off again. You do a jump kick and then another special move to it as well. There's also a high punch, high punch, down, high kick variation to it, which is a little bit more damage, if I can pull it off. But your recover time is a little bit less. So it does a little bit more damage, but it's a little harder to chain a special move at the end of it. 
And every character, doesn't matter what character you're playing, every character has the same button combination of combos. So if you pick a character by accident that you're not familiar with, you can actually do the same, same combos. So because I'm doing a three hit pop-up combo, I can actually chain the spear at the end of it and turn it into a big combo here. Oops, didn't do the sword in time. That was a good uh, variation there. Yeah, graphics on the Nintendo 64 version because of the polygon count and the textures is much better than the PlayStation version. Um, PlayStation version, however, has the, f the CGI cutscenes and CGI endings. Um, PlayStation version has a little bit better color, not because of the, the port, but because of the capabilities of the console. Because the Nintendo 64 version, the highest video output is as video, so you're actually limited to that. Oh, see, there's a good combo right there. You also throw the weapon as well, so that's kind of cool. With the Mortal Kombat 11 trailer, I've seen some rumors and theories that the Mortal Kombat 11 is going to put more of an emphasis on weapons again, kind of like the uh, five Mortal Kombat 5, 6, and 7 did. Um, kind of taking a cue from maybe this game a little bit, or we'll see how that, how that works. Because if you knock a, a weapon out of your opponent's hand, you can actually pick that up. So you can pick up your opponent's weapon as well. Also, like Mortal Kombat X or Mortal Kombat 10, if you like to refer to it that way, had kind of like a interactive environments where you can jump off of things. Um, you'll see some stages with like rocks and stuff that you can pick up and throw. So a little bit of an interactive environment with Mortal Kombat 4 as well. So it was the first Mortal Kombat to, to do that. Going back on the combos again. Another variation of the combos is you can do high punch, high punch, high kick, and back and high kick. Let's see if I can pull it off here. So just do a simple four hit combo like that. But uh, yeah, like, like I talked about earlier, Mortal Kombat 4 is actually easily one of my favorite Mortal Kombat's. Even though I prefer the digital actor look, I still love how smooth this game plays. And I just really, really enjoy the game. And it's not really a popular Mortal Kombat game when looking back on it. But uh, I really liked it. Um, I talked about in my previous videos where Mortal Kombat 3... I love this, you know, if you don't continue. I love this animation right here. It's really, really good. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I talked about in my previous Mortal Kombat 3 videos where um, Mortal Kombat 3 was a little more cartoony, you know. Mortal Kombat 4 kind of went back a little more mature. So it was more mature rated like Mortal Kombat 1 and 2, even a little bit more so, actually. They took out the friendships, they took out the babalities, stuff like that, so. I used to have a Mortal Kombat 4 arcade stand-up. My Mortal Kombat 3 stand-up actually had converted to Mortal Kombat 4 for a little while before I ended up selling the motherboard on eBay. But, yeah, I mean, right off the bat, um, the Nintendo 64 version is actually my favorite version in this game. Um, actually, technically, the Dreamcast version is the same, but I'm actually considering that a, a different version. You know, Mortal that the Dreamcast version has Mortal Kombat Gold, which is like the equivalent of... Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, so it's like it's like Mortal Kombat 4's ultimate version, but it's really not a valid comparison, just because it has extra content and it came out later. But I, I think I'm going to do a Mortal Kombat Gold video after this as well, just because I really enjoy that game as well. But in terms of why this game isn't as popular, or is wasn't as popular as the other Mortal Kombat's, I mean I got a couple of theories behind that. One is um, the PlayStation version was the more common version that people played back in the day. And, um, of course, you, you can see the graphics in the, play, or the Nintendo 64 version are better than the PlayStation version. So I think people kind of got turned off by the lesser graphics on the PlayStation version. I'm trying to remember the fatality on this guy. I thought it was forward, oh, forward, forward, down, up, I think it is. Forward, forward, down, up, high punch. I think it was doing forward, forward, down, up. Anyway, the PlayStation version had a little lesser graphics with the polygon count and whatnot, so I think that 
rub people the wrong way. Even though um, the gameplay was pretty much identical, especially to the arcade version. And even though I had both consoles back in the day, I still had the PlayStation version just because I picked it up for really, really, really cheap back in the day. I man managed to play the Nintendo 64 version at a game store they had it on display. And I was really impressed by how, how much better it was. But I never picked it up just because I didn't have a lot of money at the time. And I picked up the PlayStation version for really cheap. So I actually settled for that version. So because, you know, the PlayStation version was more common and just kind of rubbed people the wrong way in terms of the graphics, that's one of the reasons why I think 4 isn't as popular. But that's not the main reason. The main reason I don't think 4 is as popular, and this is why it took me a while to get into the game, is the early revisions of the arcade that came out. Like when I first played, um, let's see, 4-4 four, four down, up, maybe it's low punch. Man, it's been a while since I played the King on this. But when I first played Mortal Kombat 4 in the arcade, I played one of the early revisions. If you ever play Mortal Kombat 4 in the arcade, make sure it's revision 3. Because that's the one that has all the updated combos and everything, and the correct weapons, and all the characters. But some of the early revisions of Mortal Kombat 4 didn't even have all the characters. I mean, it wasn't even, you know, completed. They were still working on the game. So it didn't have the, like the the combos, didn't have the full combos. It had like maybe like some two or three hit combos, and that's about it. So when you're going from Mortal Kombat 3 and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 to uh, Mortal Kombat 4, it didn't feel like they added a lot of content to it. So it almost felt like a downgrade, even though it still had you know Scorpion, Sub Zero, uh, Johnny Cage had a lot of the returning characters that Mortal Kombat 3 did not have. You know, had Raiden and whatnot. Also had a lot of new characters, but this was about the time when they were starting to add characters that, in my opinion, it didn't appeal to the audience as well as it should have. I'm going to have to look that up real quick. I'm going to look that up on my phone. Liu King's Mortal Kombat 4 moves. MK4, Liu King moves let's see forward 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 no that's not it no okay forward down down up high punch I was doing it right I just must have messed it up on it <laughs> I forgot what I was talking about here oh yeah so the different revisions of uh, Mortal Kombat in the arcade you know it just it didn't feel like it didn't feel like a complete game, and this was when they started adding characters that, new original characters that didn't really appeal to the target audience as much. You know, it had like a lot of carbon copies of uh, characters, like Jarek was a carbon copy of Kano. Um, you know, he was a good character, it wasn't too bad, but I thought it would have been better if they just added Kano. I thought it would have just, you know, fit the game a little bit better. But, um... They also added Tanya, which was actually originally supposed to be Katana. In fact, if you're playing the home versions and use a Game Shark, you can actually unlock some of the code to change Tanya into Katana. But they, they changed uh, Katana to Tanya, you know, because they wanted another original character. Uh, they added Kai, which I think Kai is just a stupid character. Fujin, Fujin's okay. Uh, this character, Rico, originally I didn't care for him, but actually when I started playing him, he's actually a pretty good character. So, but I didn't get into Mortal Kombat 4 until um, my local comic book store slash arcade got the version of it. And they actually upgraded it to Mortal, uh, Revision 3 right away. And there was a dude named Eric, if I remember correctly. Eric or Evan? Uh, he worked at like a computer IT guy. He was a cool dude, and he was really good at four. And he played Liu Kang, and he knew like the combo system and everything. So once I saw him play it, I'm like, oh wow, this game actually looks really, really good. And it was shortly after that when I found my uh, PlayStation One copy of Mortal Kombat Four for just dirt cheap. There we go. Here's Fatality. Throws him into the screen. <laughs> Blood on the screen. <laughs> I love fatalities in Mortal Kombat 4. But, um, 
yeah, played the PlayStation version and kind of mimic what I saw there and kind of figured out the combo system and learn how to play the game. And then right after that, I fell in love with Mortal Kombat 4 just right away. And at that point, it's been easily my favorite Mortal Kombat. Or one of. Let's see if I can get where this rock is. So yeah, Mortal Kombat 4 was the first Mortal Kombat to have interactive environments, which I kind of touched up on earlier, so there's kind of a little demonstration of that. But yeah, I mean, PlayStation version, you know, I'm not really talking too much about that and with the exception of the graphics, but um, loading times on the PlayStation version actually weren't too bad. They really weren't too noticeable like they were in uh, Mortal Kombat 3 and Mortal Kombat Trilogy. So that really wasn't too much of a, a deterrent. Of course, they added like a max damage limit, so you can't do like, if you find some trick to doing like a huge combo, if it gets like 40 or 45% damage, it'll actually stop your combo for you. <laughs> <laughs> Love the bicycle kick. So another thing that they added in all the home versions that the arcade version didn't have, even the latest revision, is they added Goro as a sub-boss. So, although Goro is actually really, really cheap. He's really hard. So, they could have did a better job incorporating Goro in the game, but... Still, still good. It's still a nice little nod to the original Mortal Kombat. But in terms of which version is better between these two, uh, PlayStation 1 version is really good. I, I encourage you, if that's like the only one you have access to playing, uh, giving it a chance and looking, trying to look past the graphics not being as good. But the Nintendo 64 version, in my mind, is the much, much better version. Even though it doesn't have this, the CGI, but... The CGI cutscenes aren't really that big of a deal because the arcade version didn't even have that. So the Super Nintendo or the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo 64 version is a much closer um, port compared to, or much better, much closer port to the arcade version. So it's much closer to that. Believe it or not, I think I'm actually getting better at doing commentary and playing the game at the same time. Of course, Johnny Cage, a returning character, so that's nice. Which, you know, of course, you didn't have to worry about the original actor uh, returning for his role as Johnny Cage because he did the promotion for that rival game because it's all 3D graphics. But the graphics for this game were actually really good at the time. I mean, it was actually kind of shocking how realistic they looked because, you know, 3D polygon graphics was very new at the time because this is when Tekken Tekken 1, Tekken 2, Virtual Fighter 1 and 2 were out. Um, I think Dead or Alive. So this game made a pretty good leap. And a lot of people forget about the game that was kind of a spin-off of Mortal Kombat. Um, it, it was kind of like the early version of Mortal Kombat 4. It kind of used a lot of the tech. It was I want to say it was like a tech demo from Mortal Kombat 4. It was called uh, War Gods. It was a 3D game, 3D environment, but I think the characters were still kind of digitized. So it was kind of like a, a hybrid of that. <laughs> so it wasn't too bad of a game, but it was really hard to play. Let's show off Rico real quick. I like playing as Rico. He's a pretty cool character. Originally, I didn't care for him, but once, he's, once I started playing, playing him, he's actually like a really fun character to play. So you'll see me doing the same basic dial a combo. High punch, high punch, high kick, high kick for every character. And I guess it's a good time to talk about Mortal Kombat uh, Mythology Sub-Zero, that uh, single player game that they released on the consoles. 
Because that game, the backstory in that game is actually, or that game is actually the backstory to this game, which introduced the characters of Quan Chi and, um, I think it's back, back, down, down. Uh, Quan Chi and Shinnok. Shinnok being the final boss in the game. And Quan Chi, which of course would be a major character in Mortal Kombat games. Made, made his first appearance in uh, mythologies in Mortal Kombat 4. Who is now a very popular character. So you'll see here I can actually pick up Sonya's weapon that she dropped. Another cool thing is when you get enough wins in a row to uh, go on the leaderboard and you type in your initials, during a track mode, it'll actually say the greatest warrior is and it'll actually say the initials out loud. A um, bunch of us at the comic book store arcade that we would hang out with, we were all huge wrestling fans. And my friend Scott was a huge WWF fan, but he hated WCW. And one day someone put in uh, his initials... Uh, Ah, oh, what's his fatality? I gotta look up his fatality. He put in his initials as WCW. So, um... When he came in and he heard that, he just flipped out. <laughs> Demanded that we turn off the game and everything. <laughs> I'm gonna look up his moves real quick. Well, I should be able to survive one round. Go. Moves. Let's see, fatality, back, back, down, down, high kick. Okay, I gotta hit high kick. I was hitting high punch. I haven't played this in so long, I forget how to do the fatalities. Come on, there we go. Of course, this, this stage is actually a stage fatality where you swing around, throw them in the fan. Nintendo 64 version does have a little bit of slowdown. It's not too bad, though. Like I said, the Dreamcast version is probably the the best way to play Mortal Kombat 4. There's also a PC version that came out. PC version wasn't wasn't too bad. It was actually probably the best version to come out during the time. That, but the problem with the PC version when it came out was there really wasn't a lot of good uh, PC controllers because most PC controllers only had four uh, face buttons because USB wasn't really a standard yet and um, the 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 joystick port on PCs were limited to supporting four buttons. I actually had a six-button controller for that joystick port, and they used some kind of software trick to recognize the other two buttons. I don't really know how, but somehow it did it. I wish I still had that controller around. But once USB became a standard, it was no longer a problem. And it was a very difficult game to play on uh, with a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> so now that I look at Rico's Fatality, I don't think the polygon count is higher on this version of the game. I think it's just the textures. I could be wrong. Because I remember the throwing stars in that Fatality on the arcade version and the Dreamcast version having uh, more polygons to them. Smack him in the face with the foot. Nine, 
the funny thing is because even though the Nintendo 64 version is my preferred uh, better game, I actually find myself playing the PlayStation version more. Mainly because of uh, emulation. Because I have a, a PSP with custom firmware, so I keep a lot of my PlayStation games backed up. Not pirated games, I keep backed up games. <laughs> um, and it actually plays uh, PlayStation 1 games really good. So it plays the PlayStation 1 version of Mortal Kombat 4 really, really good. So I find myself playing that version a lot. And also, I used to have a Sony Xperia Play Phone. Actually, I still have it. In fact... I think I have it sitting right here. Yeah, if you remember this old PlayStation phone? Had a couple PlayStation 1 emulators on that as well. And they actually had some pretty good PlayStation 1 emulators on it. And I used to play Mortal Kombat 4 on that all the time too. I love that phone. I wish they still updated and made newer versions of that phone. I would buy it all the time. I mean, the nice thing about that phone is... It was so convenient having a phone, a media device, a music player, and a handheld gaming console all in one device. So I only would take, you know, carry one handheld with me all the time. So it was my go my go-to handheld device at the time. Now it's um, PSP and Nintendo Switch. And I still play I still keep the PSP around just, you know, to keep play a bunch of older games. But Switch being my um, my go-to portable console. I really wish they make a Switch Mini. And I still think they are. A lot of rumors out right now of uh, new uh, Switch Pro rumors, but I don't think they're true. I mean, I think they'll make a Switch Pro eventually. Probably like a couple of years, but the 2019 Switch revision everyone's talking about, I mean, I am I would put money on it that's a, a Switch Mini, which I did a video on. Just because... The Switch needs to be a better 2DS, 3DS successor in terms of size and price. Because they're going to phase it out eventually. And Nintendo doesn't really have too much of a history of releasing more powerful revisions of their hardware. I mean, they did with a 3DS, but it wasn't like something they really capitalized on. But we'll see. So here, now we're going to see the Goro fight, and you'll see that Goro is cheap as hell in this game. Eventually you can get him kind of locked into a, a combo combo stun lock here, which hopefully I do. Oh, no, he blocked it. Ugh, his attacks are just brutal. Whoops, I messed up the combos. I actually have most luck with him with uh, Scorpion, just because I changed such a huge combo. Ugh. There we go. I don't know if I can lock him in this, I can usually do pretty good. Oh, no, he blocked it. Yeah, that worked out good. Now let's see if I can do it on the third round. Oh, oh, this is this will do like almost half the damage. Of course, the the running, the you know, little green bar there. Run button made its return from Mortal Kombat 3. In a nutshell, this game almost feels like a 3D version of Mortal Kombat 3. Oh crap! Come on, survive, survive! Don't, don't. There we go. <laughs> it almost feels like a 3D version of Mortal Kombat 3. It plays a little smoother. So, I mean, if people still don't, um, still don't care for Mortal Kombat 4, it's understandable. I, I encourage you guys, if you have a negative opinion of Mortal Kombat 4, go back and try and give it another chance. If you don't know like how the combo system and stuff works. Especially if you're a Mortal Kombat 3 fan. So, 
Shinnok being the final boss, um, he's kind of like this version, this game's version of Shang Tsung. Because it's 3D graphics, there's no, um, there's no mo character morphing in the game because there's really no way to do it back then. So he does what's called impersonations. So basically does all of their, their moves and fighting styles. There we go. Just beat the game. Of course, you'll see like that, that 3D whirlwind effect. It kind of smooths out the pixels and stuff, which was a nice little feature that Nintendo 64 did. Kind of an anti-aliasing feature. And we'll show off the ending here. Of course, it uses the in-game graphics for the ending, so it basically um, takes it right off the arcade, where the PlayStation version and also the Mortal Kombat Golden and Dreamcast uses the CGI uh, cutscenes. Now, remember this ending originally teased that Rico is actually uh, Shao Kahn, because I think he puts on... Or actually, no, not this version. It was like a lame ending, but the PlayStation version shows him putting on Shao Kahn's helmet. So I don't know if he was originally intended to be Shao Kahn or if he was, like, taking his place. But later on in the story, you find out that he's actually not Shao Kahn. So, well, let me skip past the credits, or do I got to go through all the credits? Yeah, we'll just, we'll just watch the credits real quick. And we'll comment on the, the PlayStation footage here that we're watching. I actually got pretty good at uh, playing Sonya, chaining her combos. You know, do the basic high punch, high punch, high kick, high kick combo. And then I would do like the little cartwheel and then run up and do the leg grab real quick. And you actually chain a pretty good sized combo with her. But you got to get the timing down just right. Of course, you see the loading time like I talked about earlier. The loading time in the game isn't isn't too bad on the PlayStation version. So it's, it's certainly not a deal breaker. It's not like a, a factor like Mortal Kombat Trilogy was with the PlayStation version compared to the Nintendo 64 version. Mortal Kombat 4 has been brought to you by Midway, which no longer exists. R.I.P. Midway. Of course, and there I am fighting Jarek, who is basically a Kano clone. He does Kano's fatality and does Kano's little cannonball attack. Of course, you'll see some variations in the color, which I think I talked about in the beginning of the video where uh, PlayStation version has a little bit brighter color than Nintendo 64 recording here, but that's because I'm recording in S-Video. Still waiting on my HDMI mod to show up, which will probably be a while. So that's going to be an interesting uh, experience trying to install that. I haven't decided if I'm going to try and install it myself or I'm going to pay a modder to do it. I modded my uh, Nintendo Entertainment System with HDMI. That was definitely a chore. So we'll play uh, one more quick game here just to wrap it up. Gotta play some Sub-Zero. They brought back uh, Sub-Zero's classic uh, head rip fatality. And the screen doesn't turn black like it does in Mortal Kombat 3 or Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Of course he went back to using his ninja outfit. Even though in the story it's the same... It's the younger brother Sub-Zero that was in Mortal Kombat 2 and 3. Although they limited Sub-Zero's moveset a little bit in this one. Like, he does the ice clone like he does in Mortal Kombat 3. But he doesn't shoot the ice up in the air. So I don't know why they limited his moves a little bit. But he's still a good character in this. Another thing I want to talk about is when you use the ice or the spear and you go to uppercut him right away. Let's see if I can pull it off. And if I go to uppercut him... There's actually some diminishing returns on the damage. So, you generally want to try and pull off a combo instead of doing a straight uppercut. I don't know if they try to, like, line that up more with, like, um, damage that projectiles do or what, but for whatever reason, that's just how the game's programmed. Ugh. I didn't pull out the weapon fast enough to chain it at the end of the combo. So you can see that uppercut hardly did any damage. 
Come on. Of course, it also added a, a second type of jump kick. Like if you do a jump kick... Um, Oop, I messed up in fatality. If you do a low kick jump kick, you'll more kick them straight down. Or if you do a high, cup, high kick jump kick, you'll kind of knock them in the air more like your traditional jump kick in Mortal Kombat. So I'm basically when I play a sub zero, I try to do the high punch, high punch, high kick, high kick, and chain the slide at the end of it. So I really like the combo system, even though the combo system it takes out the variety in all the different characters, but I like how you can chain the special moves at the end of the combos. So, so I actually like the combo system in this. And it still uses the dial a combo uh, function that Mortal Kombat 3 had. There we go. Here's a fatality. <laughs> uh, nice and gruesome spinal cord hanging down and everything. <laughs> uh, Jack Thompson is rolling over, panicking right now. See, like an uppercut there, if you don't freeze them and do an uppercut, it, it still does the normal damage. But if you do it when they're frozen, it does a really small amount of damage. Yeah, see, even the roundhouse kick did the same thing. And of course, just like in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Mortal Kombat Trilogy, you can do the kind of like the, the jumping punch and chain that into the combo as well. I find it a little harder to do in this one just because the timing is kind of hard to kind of hard to do. So I don't really do it as much in this game. I need to get used to doing that more. Pick up my ice mace a little bit. There we go. You can do a sweep of the ice mace and you can just... It's really hard to block if you're playing against someone using a Sub-Zero. <laughs> that never gets old. That fatality never gets old. It's definitely one of the best. So I haven't really decided how I'm going to cover Mortal Kombat's 5, 6, and 7 yet. I th what I think I'm going to do is c just kind of do like an overview of all three games kind of in one video. Since they're very similar to being the same game. I could do a versus Let's Play format, but um, I kind of want to talk about it. Oh, kill him with his own weapon now. I kind of want to show off the, the graphics like in full screen, because a couple of them were capable of high definition and whatnot, so... Or even if I'll do them at all. And his second fatality is basically the one, um, 
he had a Mortal Kombat 2 and the Super Nintendo version of Mortal Kombat 1 where he freezes him and goes up to him and uppercuts him and shatters him. Not too bad of a fatality. And there on the left you'll see the ending of the PlayStation version, how it'll use uh, CG, CG uh, cutscenes. Don't shut up. Oh, God damn, I knew that was happening. So I get him in this combo lock here. Nope. Oh. Might have him. Oh! That cheap son of a gun. Too bad I didn't beat the game of Sub Zero a little sooner. I can show the cuts, the ending side by side. All right, let's see if I can lock him in. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, oh god, it's gonna kill me. Dang. Alright, we're gonna try this again. My name is Ah. <laughs> we'll give us one more shot and then we'll call it a day. I wonder if you'll walk into that all, the whole time. I know when you when you fight the final boss, Shinnok, with uh, Sub-Zero, you can do the Ice Clone, and he'll just walk into it almost every time. Let's see if it works with Goro. Oh, we got him in the combo lock here. Let's stick with this for right now. Oh. Oh, yeah, it just walks right into it. I didn't know that worked on him. Oh, he's going to have me in the corner? No. Sometimes he'll throw you in the corner and he'll just grab you and throw you again. He'll take away about three quarters of your health. Oh, come on. Ice clone. Oh, that'll work. Alright. Lock him in the combo. Yep. Yeah, when he stops and poses, you can run up and get a combo on him. All right, final round. See if we can pull it off. I think this is the last Mortal Kombat that John Tobias worked on as well, one of the original co-creators. Who is no longer involved in Mortal Kombat, has been... Oh, yes. Oh, see, got me in a combo lock there. Of course, Ed Boon's still the mastermind behind Mortal Kombat, but John Tobias has been gone from the franchise for quite a while. <laughs> so, yeah, that is Mortal Kombat 4 on the PlayStation 1 and the Nintendo 64 console. Um, let me know what you think about the game. Uh, if you've never played it or if you played it and hated it, uh, go back and give it another try. Um, if you have and you still hate it or it turns out you like it, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I absolutely love this game. It's still one of my favorite Mortal Kombat's. Um, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Take care.